I never ever imagined that all over the world, virtually everyone will be told to isolate themselves during such an uncertain time as we have experienced over the past five months. Even here, on the small island of Flores in eastern Indonesia, where we have a major seminary with over 1,000 students, lay and clerical. In Indonesia, the pandemic has yet to reach its climax. The end is nowhere yet in sight. Yes, we willingly comply with the lockdown, even though the cost is high. The COVID-19 pandemic has exposed social, economic and cultural injustices we cannot ignore. We cannot be indifferent. This is a time to reimagine our mission. Living in this unusual context, we ask ourselves who we are called to be as divine word missioners. First things first. Thousands of unemployed migrants have been returning to Flores Island, leading to widespread hunger. And so, Convoys have been delivering food parcels and face masks to some of those in need. The pandemic has led to the cancellation of the annual holiday at the major seminary. So, instead of returning to their home village, convoys have been busy on the seminary farm. COVID-19 is teaching us to return to ecological farming, free of destructive chemicals, working with and not against nature, as indeed did our ancestors. As Pope Francis puts it, the pandemic has highlighted how vulnerable and interconnected we all are. If we do not take care of each other, starting with the least, those who are most affected, including creation, we cannot heal the world. For four whole months, we had no parish liturgy. While many parishioners found some solace in prayer while watching Mass online, that's not liturgy. Watching a priest live streaming on his own says that Mass is, is an activity of the priest alone. The congregation stays silent, praying individually. That's a return to clericalism. But there are positive developments. The Word of God has returned to the center. Personal reading and meditating on the scriptures and Bible sharing via Zoom have become the key to spiritual nourishment in online community networks. As Esfidis, we are being summoned to return to our fundamental identity to be authentic witnesses of the Word. For the past five and a half months, families have not been allowed to visit members imprisoned in the local jail. Already isolated behind prison walls, prisoners are separated from families and friends. Thankfully, for the past month, I have been allowed to re-enter the prison as a Catholic pastor. And so, our Isfadi students now enter and accompany the prisoners in their Bible sharing listening to and learning from the prisoners as they reflect on their lives in the light of the Bible. In patriarchal culture, men find it difficult to accept their faults. But in Bible sharing, they can come to accept themselves, their criminal past, and so look forward to the future with hope. Among the more vulnerable are jobless migrants returning with the HIV virus. 
HIV carriers are being stigmatized, shunned by family, friends, and neighbors. And now they fear COVID-19 could put an end to what's left of their life. One way to learn to accept oneself, to acknowledge one's past, to regain self-confidence, and look to the future with hope, is to reflect on the Word of God. And so confers accompany groups of HIV carriers as they learn from the Scriptures that God's love is unconditional. God's love and compassion have no limits. This realization marks the start of a life with courage, a renewed sense of human dignity. In reading the Bible, we listen to people pour out their feelings and their experiences, their anxieties and their worries. This helps us to listen to and appreciate insights from the margin of society that are crucial in our own formation as SVDs. Confronted with the vulnerability of human life, we increasingly feel the power and the value of the gospel. The COVID-19 virus has impacted the family. With no regular income, with children at home all day as schools have closed, and with husbands not knowing what to do, sadly, but understandably, domestic violence has increased. In Maumere Town, the Holy Spirit Sisters run a safe house for victims and survivors of violence, including sexual violence. We listen to their excruciating tales as the women weep. We also hear them cry out to God, Why have you allowed me to suffer this fate? Where were you, God, when my father abused me? Why were you silent? We listen and embrace. Eventually, survivors come to experience the God of compassion and justice. As the process of regaining self-esteem gains momentum, so cases are brought to court so that the perpetrator learns to pay his debt. And we later meet the perpetrator in prison and with him reflect on the scriptures. Slowly, ever so slowly, he comes to acknowledge what he has done and learns to face himself and the future in hope. Whether as students or lecturers, our intellectual life must never be separate from life at the periphery. The context of our study is what we learn from people thrown to the edge of society. Seminary formation combines intellectual struggles and pastoral experience, for we need both the intelligence of a professional and the courage of an activist. In both study and pastoral work, we continue our lifelong learning. We learn to listen intently to other people's opinions while gathering a wealth of experience in the field. Only then will we have the ability to summarize a variety of options. As for Mandy and for, for Matus, we must really merge with the vulnerable and know what simple people experience and suffer. What is the point of studying philosophy and theology if we are not eager to implement what God is teaching us? There is little point in studying the Bible if our learning is confined to our heads. What then is mission in these troubling times? As ever, our mission vows call us to prophetic dialogue. This implies we have a clear vision, a critical mind, and a fundamental option for the neglected. We must continue to cross geographical and cultural, indeed personality boundaries. In such unsettling times, we are called to live a simple, honest, and courageous lifestyle, happily entering the narrow alleys of people's life. Crossing borders is not that easy. We are called to spend a lifetime moving beyond our own limitations. 
But then, our calling is to cross the boundaries of marginalized humanity, embracing whoever is forgotten or trampled upon by arrogant power. Our strength as SVDs does not lie in titles and positions, but in our hearts and in actions that are fully humanitarian, transparently embraced by the love of the crucified and resurrected Christ. We must never submit to the law of comfort and stability. We need courage not to be enticed by the corruption and nepotism around us, ever ready to voice truth and justice. We need to be conferers who courageously leave behind personal security, who are not confined to the past, to establish ways. However uncertain the times, we strive for humanity in its fullness. And yes, that means coming out of our comfort zones, leaving behind established ways of doing things. We need to keep going without much hesitation, sowing seeds of goodness and truth as we witness to the word. We willingly enter risky zones, yet are steadfast and firm, strong in love and hope, for in meeting the marginalized, we're encountering Christ himself. Thank you.